Hi, my name is Diana Britton, Managing Editor of WealthManagement.com and Rep Magazine. I'm here talking with Dwayne Thompson. He's a consultant for IMCA and also moderated a panel today on fiduciary issues. Um, so, Dwayne, we had Phyllis Borzi of the DOL talking about the fiduciary standard that they're, the proposal that they're working on. What was your reaction to her thoughts? Anything surprising come out of it? Well, uh, first of all, I, I think we were very fortunate to have uh, the Assistant Secretary who's involved in a highly controversial issue that's top of mind for a lot of advisors and wealth managers to participate, at least uh, through a satellite feed from Washington, to talk to uh, what well, was really a crowded, a crowded uh, audience of advisors. And, uh, and, and just because now EMCA uses a... Uh, uh, email system to get questions from the audience and uh, I was hoping we'd have a few questions during the Q&A period to ask her a uh, number of questions and, and I was literally overwhelmed with emails coming in so I think that kind of showed the intensity of the interest. But in answer to your question about did she uh, uh, provide any new news? Uh, unfortunately not. Uh, we, she did shed a little light on the timing. There's a lot of uh, very interested parties waiting to see when this re-proposal of fiduciary standard will come out. Mm -hmm. And uh, she mentioned in a couple months. So that, in my mind, says perhaps late June or July. So it's, it's a matter of trying to read the tea leaves. Uh, and, and I think she's also restricted in what she can say about what the rule will actually contain until it comes out. So, so in some ways her hands are tied, but I think it's very helpful to have someone who really has an incredible amount of influence in the policy of what was it, it was something like 140 million uh, plan participants and, and IRA account holders and all that uh, that uh, will come and talk to a group of uh, advisors and, and answer questions directly. So I think that was really beneficial to the audience and, uh, and I think it, I hope at least it helped shed some light on some of the uh, differences in the way a fiduciary standard for an advisor is applied because I think there's an impression, in fact uh, let me recount one question that I uh, didn't use, but I thought it was still humorous in a way, and that was, I'm all, someone who sent in a question said, I'm, I'm already a fiduciary, do I need to tattoo it on my forehead? <laughs> and uh, I didn't ask the Assistant Secretary that question, but I, I think it also showed uh, the fact that most advisors do try and act in their client's best interest, but there's some legal nuances in how it applies to you, whether you're advising a client's 401k account or if you're advising a, uh, a regular brokerage portfolio. And so I thought in a way, it, it, to me at least, it helped illustrate uh, some of the perhaps impatience or uh, misunderstandings out there about exactly what is a fiduciary. And so I think having a combination of the assistant secretary and also a, a, an expert on uh, advisor fiduciary standards of Blaine Aiken from uh, FI360 was helpful to the audience, especially I think at least getting the group and uh, getting the assistant secretary in front of a large group and being able to ask questions. Yeah. Well, I mean, one of the things that, that everybody wants to know is are there going to be these prohibitive transaction exemptions? And she said that they are going to have some exemptions if they will work and if they are protecting consumers at the same time. What do you think, I mean, are we going to have some, you know, exemptions for certain types of compensation? What do you think that might look like? That's, that's a good question, and, and that was, uh, I, I think, good that the Assistant Secretary touched on a critical issue for uh, those advisors in the plan area that provide advice to the plan sponsors uh, on what investment options should go into the plan and uh, where that crosses the line and instead of becoming a securities, being a securities broker and uh, just giving uh, general advice on the plan options, when do they sort of cross that border and become a, a, an ERISA fiduciary and are subject to a higher standard of accountability? And so she got into that a little bit. She wanted to assure the crowd because when I, when I asked uh, uh, people to raise their hands how many were involved in plans, it was 
out of maybe the 500 or so people in the audience, it looked like uh, almost half, maybe 250 people were yeah. were involved in plans, which kind of surprised me because I, I thought, uh, again, uh, the, the audience, uh, most of them had, uh, you know, retail clients, but they also uh, did a lot in the plan world. And so mm -hmm. I think that's an important question about uh, when do you cross over the line and you, and you have to accept fiduciary status uh, where currently... Uh, you don't have to do that. And, and certainly the, she's uh, emphasized the fact that the Department of Labor uh, is looking to expand the definition, not to change it, but to expand the securities brokers, but to help create, I think, a, a brighter line so that brokers can understand when they're subject to fiduciary standard and when they're not. And it's a very messy area of the law, but uh, hopefully uh, she was able to shed a little bit of light on it uh, for the attendees. Yeah. So we'll see. Yeah, I mean, I think it, it just encompassed that one line that she said in terms of whether IRAs are going to be addressed in the thing. You know, you're going to have to wait for the movie to come out on that yes, one. Yes, so. that's that's one of the $38,000 questions, <laughs> although I think it's probably worth more than that to a lot of people. And IRAs have not been uh, as closely examined by compliance departments. It's my understanding that some broker-dealers will allow their registered reps to give advice to uh, IRA account holders but not to 401k plan because there are some other exceptions to accepting uh, differential compensation for an IRA, which helps illustrate, I think, the confusion out there. When, when you're talking about a, a 401k plan, an IRA, or a taxable brokerage portfolio, you're talking about different compliance standards that apply to all three. And, and yes, that was, that was one of the big issues, is how will the new fiduciary standard apply to IRA accounts? And, and also she had mentioned uh, rollovers. And it, to me, it sounds like, although she, she didn't say it explicitly, that they're seriously considering uh, applying a fiduciary standard to brokers and others who give advice on whether or not to roll over uh, you know, someone's 401k plan assets into an IRA. Mm -hmm. So so I think there's big changes that are happening. And, and so I think it was great to get somebody who's really uh, at the, in the driver's seat yeah. for, for this new rule and have her talk directly to an audience. Yeah, it was very interesting. Well, thank you so much for your time, Dwayne. We really appreciate it. Thank you. And thank you for watching.